Hi guys! Today we are going to be looking at the tentacles of a squid, Squid Anatomy Episode 2. But first, I know I don't have a proper uploading schedule, I will go more into detail about this at the end of the video, so stay tuned for that. Make sure to check out the community and discussion tab of my YouTube channel to see updates, like I will write stuff and post it to there, so check that if you want to know what's going on with the channel. Anyway, here is the video. So, as I said in my previous squid anatomy video, I said most people get the arms of squids and the tentacles of squid confused, as a lot of people think that arms are the tentacles, but this isn't true, that's, that's wrong. This is a squid tentacle. Notice how the end of it flattens out while the rest of it is super long and skinny. This part is called the tentacle stalk, and this part is called the tentacle club. And the tentacles are usually much longer than the arms. Squid tentacles only have suction cups on the ends of them, on the club instead of the entire length down like squid arms do. They have these special suckers and like little knobby bits called carpal knobs and carpal suckers that's right below the club and those line up with other ones on the other side and they stick together to keep the tentacles together when grabbing prey. It's just more accurate. Now in the last video I said that squid arms were numbered, like the pairs were numbered, and the squid tentacles sit in between the third and fourth pair, and they normally come out from the head right next to the beak. So the main use of squid tentacles is to grab onto prey. The tentacles of most squid are bunched up under the arms, and when prey is spotted, they shoot the tentacles out in less than a second, grabbing the prey and pulling it back for their arms to hold. But some squid have like super long tentacles, and we don't 100% know how they use them, but our current theory is they would hold them out and in the deep dark waters, stick them in between a school of fish or whatever, and when a fish swam in between them, it would snap shut and pull it back. But this would really only be effective in dark environments because it's easy to see the tentacles if there's enough light to see them. And this is how we believe the giant squid uses its tentacles. So as I said before, we don't know much about how long it takes for squids to regenerate their arms and tentacles, and so the same problem with squid arm regeneration is with the squid tentacle regeneration. We don't know how long it takes, we don't know anything really about it. It is speculated that it depends on the species and how much nutrition they get, which is our best bet for now. More research is needed. With the massive amount of squid species that there are, over 300 different types, some of them are bound to have different adaptations to their environment. Many different types of squid have completely different tentacle clubs depending on what they try to eat. So here are a few different types of tentacle clubs to show you just a sample of the amount of variety that can happen. This is the Japanese flying squid, and this is a drawing of a tentacle club that belongs to it. I did not draw this, I did not take credit for this. So, in the middle of the tentacle club, there are much larger suction cups than near the end or on the carpal knobs and suckers, as you can see down there. This is one of the more generic squid tentacle clubs that you can find, but literally every single one is different because they all live in different environments, so it's really hard to say what a generic one is. I consider this one generic because most common squid have tentacle clubs like this, but yeah. This is the Magister armhook squid. It has about 20 tiny suction cup rows on its tentacle club. The tentacles are much shorter than the average squid tentacle as it is less than the mantle length and most squid tentacles are longer than the mantle length of the squid. This is the lesser bobtail squid. Its tentacle clubs have around 5 to 8 rows of suction cups on them. The suckers in the middle of the tentacle club are larger than the ones at the tip as that is easiest for squids to catch prey with the middle part, and so the suckers need to be bigger to hold on to things better. The current picture is of a tentacle club that is about 11 millimeters long. That is how small these squids are. This is Austromagicophora. Austrorosia magiscophora. Austrorosia magiscophora. Anyway, this species of bobtail squid doesn't seem to have a common name that I could find, other than being a type of bobtail squid. Besides that though, they have some very interesting tentacle clubs, with 18 to 46 rows of suckers. That is a lot of suckers. I wonder how good their grip is because of how many suckers they have even though they're super small, with the biggest ones having the mantle length of 46 millimeters. The next squid I want to show you guys is 
Abrelopsis morrissey, which I believe is how you pronounce its scientific name, because this is another squid that doesn't have a common name that I can find. It is a bioluminescent squid that is even smaller than the previous squid I showed you. This one's only about three inches long. This squid has six hooks on it, each tentacle club, three out of six of them being bigger than the others. After those hooks are several rows of tiny suckers on the tips of the tentacle clubs. This next squid is the, one of the most famous squid, the giant squid. This is also the longest squid. The giant squid has four rows of suction cups on its clubs. The suckers in the middle of the club are bigger than the ones on the tip of the club. Notice a pattern? Each of the giant squid suckers have a ring of teeth on them, allowing for greater grip upon prey. In this picture, you can clearly see the carpal knob and suckers on the wrist, if you will, right below the tentacle club. And you can see how they're alternating, which allows the other, like, mirror image on the other tentacle club for them to link together easy. This next squid is the colossal squid, the heaviest squid and the biggest squid by total mass. This is its very interesting tentacle club. If you look, in the middle of the tentacle club, there are two rows of swiveling three inch long hooks to dig into its prey. And at the end, there are tiny little suction cups. The reason why it has hooks instead of suction cups on its tentacle clubs is because it needs to grab two meter long toothfish, I think, in Antarctica. And most other squid don't have to grab prey that big. So with that, I hope I was able to teach you guys about the squid tentacle and how it is different from the squid arm. If you remember from before, I have a discussion tab on my YouTube channel and I commonly post updates and stuff there so you guys know what I'm working on and so on like not completely dead channel or whatever because I don't have a good uploading schedule. Sorry about that. Please go check that out if you get the chance so that you can stay updated on what I'm doing. I'll post polls there occasionally because I'm able to. You can even have these discussion posts show up in, in your subscription feed if you go to your settings if you really want. I recently just finished my first quarter of community college and so I have a hi post editing in here. I was going to say that I was going to get this video out before winter break ended but that didn't happen. It's a month from then. I will try to work on videos in my free time as I have a light school schedule now. Anyway, hope that you guys enjoyed the video. Please subscribe for future cephalopod related content and remember to keep exploring.